Hello and welcome. While one would argue that parenting, although an absolute honour, is most probably the hardest thing anyone will ever have to do. And undertaking the role of a step parent, however, can be particularly challenging as the roles can be a little more complex and the responsibilities can be somewhat divided. Couple, coupled with this, children can feel, I guess, conflicting loyalties between their parents and step parents amongst a range of other emotions. Let's face it, you know, there's like several like contributing factors that can lead to uh, step parenting and whatever the reasons are, becoming one can be equally re rewarding as challenging. That said, we're here today to discuss you know, the common issues that may arise, I guess answer any day-to-day -day questions and share top tips to allow you to find a way of uh, step parenting that will suit you and your family. And to help discuss this topic, uh, we're wel we welcome our special guest, Carolee Katzenbarnas, an, an accomplished Australian uh, TV commentator, journalist, columnist, and media trainer. Now she has worked across Australia's mainstream TV, radio, newspapers, magazines, and online for the past 20 years. Now, she's also a mother of three children and stepmother to two young adults. And Carolee is also the author to the book, Hold It Up, Carolee, Stop, uh, Step Parenting with Purpose, Everything You Wanted to Know But Were Too Afraid to Ask, which provides invaluable insights and advice to those beginning or already on their step parenting journey. Thank you for joining us today. How are you? Hey, I'm fine. Hello, Rachel. Hello, everyone. I'm really delighted to be here. So thank you for having me. Yeah, this is great. And this is a topic that we haven't really spoken about much to date. So um, I'm really excited to be able to, to bring um, this to the forefront um, of people's you know, hearts and minds and to be able to provide some assistance and who better to do it than someone with the experience. Now, you know, the foundations, I guess, for step families are quite different and require, um, of course, you know, careful negotiation um, of roles and responsibilities. Now you, um, as I mentioned before, a step parent, of course. Um, so, so, like to begin with, um, and speaking about the book, how did you come to write the book? Well, I came to write the book. I was 32 years old. I was a flying television reporter and newsreader and all bits and pieces on radio as well when I met my husband. So, I was working seven days a week, completely single life, running around here, there, and everywhere. Suddenly, I met this amazing man. And um, he was divorced with two kids. And most of my friends gave a gulp. My family went, oh, and I thought, oh, <laughs> this is the man I'm going to marry. But he comes with two children. So the reason why the book came about is I have now been a step parent to my two stepchildren, a stepson and a stepdaughter for 15 years. They are now age 26 and 25. But when I very first met them, they were 11, 12, 12 and 13 when we got married. So I decided to write the book because I found that there were a lot of things that I had gone through and I couldn't actually find any resources at the time to help uh -huh. as opposed to you know, just clicking on and watching the odd episode of Oprah and Dr. Phil, which <laughs> um, really, really wasn't very helpful at the time. And what happened was we'd been married for about a decade and then a lot of friends of mine began either getting into long-term partnerships or marriages with men who had also been married or had kids or children from previous relationships. And let me just make quite clear on this podcast, I'm married, but my message is for anybody that is in a long-term partnership, de facto marriage, not negating anything, but just to keep it simple, I'll just say if you're married or something like that. And what I found was that my friends, I was 10 years down the track, and my friends would say to me, Carolee, oh my goodness, did this ever happen to you with your stepkids? And I'd say, oh yeah, actually it did. And they'd say, what did you do? And so I said, look, please be aware. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I have studied some psychology, but I said, these are the practical things that I found helped and maybe um, provided a circuit breaker. If you're experiencing some issues with your stepchildren or perhaps with their um, other parent, see if they work. And all my friends came back and said, wow, they're great. They're really practical and it's really helped. And so then a couple of friends said to me, you've got to write a book one day. <clears throat> and I decided to write the book. I decided to wait 15 years to write the book because I thought it was much better to write a retrospective 
look at things rather than a reactive look at things. Fantastic. And, well, and I think that that's important because, you know, hindsight gives you a lot of wisdom and it's not that you would change everything all over again, but you get a lot more perspective when you've gone through something and then you're reflecting back on it. Absolutely. So, yeah, so I wrote the book and I, it was titled, you know, Step Parenting with Purpose because if you don't go into step parenting with a really good purpose to make a positive difference to these children that are now part of your life, then you're doomed to fail. But also the tagline for the book is everything you wanted to know but were too afraid to ask because um, in an ideal world when you're a step parent you do think oh I'm just going to be you know a part-time parent and taking them here and taking them there and doing this but you also don't realize that there are a lot of other dynamics at play that may suddenly rear their head when you're on the journey whether of it's course. problems with the ex-partner of your current partner or other family members or your stepchildren who are being pulled in all different directions or pumped with information, things that you, um, that you haven't realised. And I think one of my biggest bugbears, and if there are any step parents that are listening, whenever a step parent is struggling with something and a friend says, oh, but you knew you, what you were getting into, it just raises the it hairs would. on the back of your neck and you actually either shut down and you don't bother talking to that person again and you quickly change subject or you start thinking to yourself hang on a second did did i know let me reassure everyone listening to this when you sign up as a step parent nine out of ten times you're signing up to be able to make a really positive difference and in in a very um positive way to those children that are in your care mm -hmm. you are not signing up for the emotional blackmail games you're not signing up for the bad mouthing i mean i don't want to make it all sound doom and gloom but part of my book is actually saying i've got a lot of strategies and tips and things that will help you with the situations that you soon find affect every step family around the world, no matter where they live, no matter how much they earn, no matter what they do, there are these underlying things and issues that face step families. And a lot of it comes down to jealousy of exes and human nature. And as a step parent, you, you don't have that reference point because you're not part of that history. You're coming in to make that difference, but suddenly you become being like a, how do I say, it? you become like a target or a bit of a battering ram in some way. And really the issues that are between your partner and their ex are between them. They're not between you, but you sort of get caught into that as well, which is really sad. So yes. my book, as I said, I've had some really lovely letters from people around the world. I mean, I'm not showing off, but it's been sold in the UK, the USA, Europe, Canada, Australia. I was very privileged. It went to number one on Amazon 48 hours after its release. And then, of course, we had the COVID shutdown. Mm -hmm. So that was a whole other story. But I get these, um, these messages from people around the world that say, thank you. We do not feel alone. You actually get it. And I'm very proud to say that, yes, I do get it. I mean, it is, it is a positive experience, but you have to be very naive to think that you are not going to, to encounter some difficult behaviours along, along the way. the way. Well, it's been said that it's a book that you wish you would have had 15 years ago when yes. you started your step parenting journey. Yeah. So what yes. is it about step parenting that, that you're so passionate about then? Okay. One of the things that I'm really passionate about is I always say that there is no one right way to step parent in a step parent family, but there is always one right way with how you behave towards others in the step family. And that is with respect, whether it's to the ex, whether it's the ex towards you, whether it's the stepchildren. <clears throat> step families have their own unique dynamics but good manners, good behaviour, speaking properly, not bad mouthing, that is non-negotiable. And why I'm passionate about step parenting properly in this way is that if the stepchildren can't see some good, respectful working relationships between their step parent and their, and their parents, so both sets of parents, both step parents, 
then you know what the odds are within a decade or so odds are they'll be step parents themselves maybe they'll have stepchildren yes. and the cycle will continue of bad dysfunctional behaviors now let me make this very clear i'm not saying to every step parent that you need to say to your husband or your partner's ex-wife, hey, come and have a cup of tea with me once a week and let's go shopping and let's do this. Mm. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is that there should be no bad mouthing. Same with, say, the mum. You know, if the, if the stepkids have just been with you for a weekend and say they've done some cooking with you and say the mum isn't a cook but the stepmum is. When your child goes back with some muffins, there are so many mums that will say, oh, put those in the bin, not having anything to do with that woman. And what happens is if you've got a little child that's eight, nine or 10, they've just been so excited that they can do some cooking with their stepmom. They're not thinking of those adult concepts. They've no. taken the muffins back and suddenly, and I've often, I mean, I give a few talks and things and I often say to the people, if your best friend was a cook and you weren't and she looked after your daughter or son for an afternoon, they made muffins or a cake and brought it back. Would you eat it? Would of you course. say that's nice? And they say, of course. So you need to do that as well. Because what you also have to realize is if you've got a step mum or a step dad that is trying to bond with your child in some way and find some common ground, they are not wanting to replace you as the mum or the dad. They are not wanting to take over your role. They are just wanting to try and carve out a role to bond with their stepchildren and show them some nice positive behaviours. So I'm passionate because I think that you never find, you never find a biological mum or dad. And you know that there are good and bad step parents and there are good and bad parents, but you never find a biological mum or dad that will actually admit to bad behavior. And they may not even realize what that bad behavior is. It might be a roll of the eyes if the, if the stepchild comes back and says, oh, we went, for a, we went for a hike or we went for a cycle. It might be a roll of the eyes. Um, and all those negative connotations that, that, are, that are being put onto these stepchildren, stepchildren aren't silly. They feed off things and they'll soon pick <coughs> up if there's tension between mum and the stepmum or dad or whatever. You don't need to be the best of friends, but what you need to realise is that your main priority and goal should be the welfare, love and care of the stepchildren because they're the ones that are really important. They're going to go forward in life. You don't want these dysfunctional um, behaviours being replicated again. Yes. Now, we published yes. your article, Top 10 oh, yeah. Tips for Step Parents. <laughs> for someone who Thank hasn't you. read the article, can you please um, give us an overview of what the article is about and tell us what inspired you to write it? Well, look, I just wanted to keep things fairly simple. When you become a step parent, there is so much information around. And I think, number one, the step parent is always wanting to do the right thing. And you're always worrying and second guessing and things like that. And I just, I thought, well, I'm going to just give 10 top tips of what you can actually do to try and be a really good step parent and also to get a bit of harmony within your step family. Because what I often say is in in our, in our domestic situation, we did try the one week on, one week off for a few months. It didn't work for us. And so for the majority of the years, we did exactly half the holidays, but we did every alternate fortnight. So kids coming over on a Thursday, going home on a Sunday night. But the reason why I came up with the tips was that what a step parent will often find is that it depends if, they, if they've perhaps been driven over by their mum. You don't know what has been said in the car. And so quite often on a Thursday, you might have made a special meal or something. The kids might come in. There might be niggly behaviour or this or that. And as a stepmom or a stepdad, you take it personally. Instead of realising you don't know what perhaps that parent has, had a, has said to the kids. All right? They need time to settle in as well. So what happens is you then probably get on an even keel maybe by Saturday. And then, of course, on Sunday night, they are gone again for another 10 days. And... I think it's important to remember that for a lot of these kids, like in my, um, my stepchildren situation, from the age of 10 and 11, they've been shuttling back and forth yep. between homes with suitcases. And it's a lot of change and angst and stress that a lot of the children go through that are living between, between homes. So I came up yeah, with some top tips just for step parents and also parents 
just to remember because we often are all guilty of looking at things through the adult eyes rather than the children's eyes. I mean, for example, I remember, and also my book is not, is not getting back at my husband's ex-wife or anything like that. It's just sort of saying it as it is. What we often forget is that in an ideal world, um, kids would remember things, all right, same as adults. But if you've got your children coming every 10 days or so, they've got split school schedules as well. You mm. might not have enough money to have double uniforms. And there may be occasions where in that sort of custody access visit, say when they're with the step stepmom and, and the dad, they've forgotten the netball skirt or they've forgotten the footy socks. We had a couple of situations where my husband's ex-wife would actually not allow the kids back to her house to pick up a spare sports uniform or something. Now, in hindsight, had she just met somebody? Did she want to have some romantic time and didn't, you know, wanted to know that she was clear for three or four days? That's her business. That's her prerogative. But really, I just implore all parents to realise that no one is perfect and there shouldn't be any problem that if someone has forgot an outfit or something like that that they can't just go home and get it or yes. be dropped off it doesn't yeah you understand what I'm trying to yeah. say so, so yeah what have you actually found are some of the most common challenges that new step parents face and in your view how can they sort of overcome them Okay, well, one of, one of the common things that I find is that, um, all right, as much as you might want to, as a step parent, it is not your job to fix your stepchildren. Sometimes just being there is enough to make that difference. All right, so I'll say it again, as much as you might want to, as a step parent, it is not your job to fix your stepchildren. Sometimes just being there is enough to make that difference. Now, I, when I became a step-parent, I hadn't been a parent before. We've since had three children, but at the time, I found that I was trying to be very um, mature and I was wanting to try and just, just make everything better and fix it all. At the end of the day, they're not your children. In nine times out of ten cases, they've got a mum and a dad. And not everybody agrees with the way people parent. And while there, it's nice to have some common goals and common ground rules between homes, it doesn't always happen. All right, we don't live in a utopia or anything like that. And so I found that when I remembered, no, it's not my job to fix all this. My job is to be there, that they can talk to, know that they've always got someone that they can ask something or ask a second opinion, know that someone will always be there to look after them and things. That is probably a really important point for mm. step parents to remember. Mm -hmm. um, another important point I think that will help everybody, and I'm speaking not only to step parents whose partners may not realise this, because quite often the partner doesn't realise this. Okay, high conflict manipulation is actually not co-parenting. It's detrimental to everyone. So if you're, you know, a lot of partners, so for example, a lot of men, they're worried that if they don't jump to every little tune that the ex-wife says, they're going to be denied access to their kids. And we've seen some court cases where games are played. But at the end of the day, you know, if you've got a schedule set, set down and you've arranged, you know, one weekend to swap because there might be a family occasion for one side of the family, you need to swap it and this and that. Whenever you get an ex that, swaps around and goes, oh, no, well, I'm not doing it now. Um, that's manipulation and that's high conflict manipulation. You have to have it on both sides. I mean, we, we had an example where when both our young ones, they, they were christened. My, our youngest two are, are 12 months apart and we had swapped a weekend about a month earlier because my husband's ex-wife's sister, she was having a christening and we thought, yep, no problem. But when it came to upholding the thing of, my stepkids being able to come to our kids' christening, she didn't let them come. She dropped them off for 10 minutes at the end of a Sunday and that was it. So they could have a quick photo and then that was it. Now, okay, people say, well, that shouldn't happen. You can't go to court all the time. At the end of the day, um, you can only do what you can only control what you do, what you say and how you act. And so what I would say to people is be reasonable. Um, you know, you could have six years, you could have 10 years, you could have 18 years 
of step parenting, you can't nut down every single custody access visit. Things crop up. So you might not like your ex-partner and his new partner, but be reasonable as well because you're going to have just as much stuff on your side of the family as they might on theirs. Great advice. And do you find it's common that children, I guess, will not want their situation to change and will want it to return to how it was before? Do you find that's sort of a very common thing? Look, I haven't found that in my way. What I will tell you is that kids are very um, perceptive to tension and all bits and pieces. And quite frankly, if there's been a lot of arguing and rowing going on between their parents, maybe through the divorce, they'll actually be relieved that they've got a bit of a, a quieter place that things have calmed down. But they're always going to have a loyalty to their parents, always. And I always say to a step parent, you're never going to break that loyalty and nor should you be wanting to break that loyalty. Mm. But one other important piece of advice that I have got for all the exes is this. Please remember your ex is your ex but they will never be your children's ex so don't bad mouth them yes. don't bad mouth them um okay now i'm being very general here because there are a lot of men that don't pay their child support don't fulfill their obligations there's a lot of women that don't pay their child support that don't fulfill their obligations but in the main that's an adult issue to deal with if you're not getting paid maintenance or child support you have every right to be angry, but what you don't have every right to do is to say to your kids, oh, you're so-and-so dad or you're good for nothing thing or that dreadful <laughs> stepmother. You don't have the right to do that. What you do have the right to do is go down the pub or hang out with your girlfriends and call him and the new person every name under the sun. But when it comes to your kids, zip it, lock it and Put it in your Good, pocket great and advice. do not ever bad mouth your ex. Yes. That is the number one thing as well. Because my stepson <laughs> actually said to me when he was 18, he said, you've never bad mouthed my mum or her family. And I said, no, I don't have any need to. And, and no one should. No one should. Marriages and partnerships break up for a myriad of reasons. But, you know, you just have to be firm, fair and consistent. And with regards to, I guess, the bond that step parents um, build with their um, st their stepchildren, you know, should um, step parents ex expect that the bond um, won't always necessarily form straight away? That sometimes it can take time, and in some cases, even years. I'd love to know. Do you have any tips here? Yeah, look, I do, and I've got a little statistic for you. The average time for that bond to happen is between four and seven years that's a and long indeed, time wow it is but it could take longer it could take a decade because what you have to remember what everyone has to remember is if your stepkids are living with just say for example their mum as the primary parent for the majority of the time you can only control what you say and what you do with your stepkids you've got no control over what is going on in that house and she might be bad mouthing you all day every day etc subconsciously it goes in the stepchildren are going to be reluctant to have that bond with you because they're going to think that they're dishonouring or being disloyal to their mum. They may not unravel that until their 20s. Maybe they will be step parents themselves and suddenly get it. That's something that you can't control. And, you know, I've said to friends that are step parents, it is difficult. That, that is the difficulty of being a step parent. But don't give any ammunition to your stepkids. If they know that you've never bad mouthed, their mum or so they'll know it they'll know it don't don't ever stoop to that level I mean yeah. you have to be pretty naive as a step parent to think that you're not going to be bad mouthed a few times it is very highly unlikely that both sets of parents and both sets of pair of step parents get on like a house on fire it's very naive to think that so so step parents really should just try to be accommodating and just communicate openly do you think That's yeah and yes and also um you step parents aren't a doormat i mean you you have a house if your stepchildren are coming over at times in the beginning you might feel like an insider you might feel like you've got to shrink and make yourself invisible and try and accommodate every single need of the stepkids and be walked over um you're not to be disrespected in your home what we did with my my stepkids is you know we brought them into things and i said listen i don't know what the rules are at your mum's house what i would like you to do is i'd like you to choose a chore because you're part of the family, whether you want to clear the, the table or set the table, maybe make your bed every day, put your washing in the washing basket. And I used to say, to me, these are normal household things. How do you feel about it? And that's 
the way that you get them to sort of do things because it's also important to remember that they are part of a family that you're not a hotel and if you start doing everything for them you're going to end up with very spoiled teenagers and nightmares of, of young people in their 20s by the time <laughs> they grow up because you've done everything for them because you think oh my goodness will they like me will they not if you talk openly to them and say listen we all have to do chores then you find that you get a really good working result great there. advice now we published your article um, which is um be- which beautifully highlights the top 10 tips um for step parents now can you please we're not going to go through the whole 10 um we'll have the link through to the article <laughs> in, yeah, in the i've got the article here oh my goodness look, hang on let me just try and find it hang on oh sorry this is right after that's thing, okay so- well, have one while, while you're having a look at it, up. I'll ask you another question then while you're doing this. Yes, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Don't stress. All good. Well, in your view, I guess, what are some, some questions I guess you can suggest somebody ask their partner about how they would like them to parent or step parent their child? Do you have, um, is there any things that they should or shouldn't do things? For example, would you suggest, you know, what should or shouldn't I do? Um, how can we you know, give each other feedback without taking it personally, you know, what role do you want me to play with your child? Now, how do I qualify what's working and not working? These types of things should, you know, uh, any other questions you think that you should be asking? How do you want me to? I'll, a child? I'll answer this, then I'll find that article. Um, look, I guess the thing is that it's very important as a step parent to have that understanding with your partner that any disciplining should really be coming from the actual biological father or mother. Mm-hmm. As a step parent, you really shouldn't get involved. Now, of course, if you're experiencing really really bad behavior or something like that you don't just sit there and take it you're going to have to say something but i would say to your partner that you both you must be on the same page when it comes to discipline as to what you're doing and what you're not i mean for example you every every step parent will get you're not my real mum you're not my real dad and i've had that and you can just say well no i'm not i'm actually your step mum and i actually love and care about you but the way you're behaving at the moment is actually not acceptable you're disrespecting me and you're disrespecting yourself and the family yes so that that's the way and this is probably more for the teenage years than anything mm. um i would also say to the partner to just also um and and this is where i say it's very difficult because you don't want to know everything about their past life because that's in the past they're with you for a reason because it evidently didn't work but it is also important to find out why the marriage or the long-term partnership did actually break up all right that is important it might be an uncomfortable thing for people to talk about but but you you do need to actually find out um is it as simple that they just grew apart they got together too young is it the fact that one of them was stricter on the kids than the other it was it work pressures did one of them have an affair did one of them you've really got got to try and get get to that thing so that you can actually move forward because for example if you know if you're a woman and and, and you're with a man and you know he did actually no discipline at all and he let the kids run right and this and that and his ex-wife got really fed up of how he was parenting are you going to be the one that's going to have to take that on and while i say you've got to work out where your boundaries are as well and you can't try and fix your your parenting style yeah but establish your parenting style find out find out what you know what is acceptable ask your partner now how is this going to work i'm here to help parent your kids they're now my stepkids however i think that you know with discipline and this that and what have you that should really be your area and we need to we need to you know think of a few things ahead of time as to what may actually crop up Mm-hmm. Um, as you mentioned before, um, you are weren't a, it's okay. <laughs> you weren't a parent first. So, so what if um, they haven't been a parent before? Do you have any advice for someone becoming a parent a, and a step parent for the first time? And how can I guess they develop their own parenting style? Is it a, a matter of them learning about the child's likes and dis, dislikes and routines um, and learning about positive parenting techniques and even maybe taking a parenting class or even understanding, I guess, the developmental stages of the stepchild. Um, What are your thoughts on this sort of stuff? Okay. So one thing that I always did is when I first, first met my stepkids, because I didn't have anything, I found out what their interests were. 
and I made sure that I didn't overstep the boundary. And that's also an important thing for step parents. Um, you doesn't know, doesn't matter what their age is. So irrespective, it doesn't matter what the age yep. is. Don't don't try and one up one up their mum or their parent. You know, if they're into the latest, say, Liverpool soccer team or something like that, don't go out and spend two hundred dollars on soccer stuff and say here you are, because you know that if they don't have that already, there's a reason for it. Maybe the parent can't afford it. Maybe they're waiting for an appropriate time to give them a gift. Maybe it's something they're working towards at school. Maybe the parent has said, listen, you you know, you keep getting your good grades, and at the end of the semester, we'll go and buy you the latest Liverpool top or whatever. Um, I also think that with, with parenting, it's, it's important to realise that, yes, if you don't have children before, you need to realise that you're not there to be a good time, a good time, you're not there to be their best friend. You're there to be an authority figure, but someone that they can trust and that they can talk to and that they can open up to as well. Because you've always got to think, um, there's that very famous movie with um, Susan Sarandon and Julia Roberts called Stepmom in the yes. 80s. And it's one where the girl isn't allowed to go to pop concerts, um, you know, during the week or anything like that. And of course, the stepmom gives the mum the idea that she wanted to get tickets to Pearl Jam and she knew that it wasn't there. And the mum said, oh, you know, okay. And then she suddenly bought the tickets and she stole the idea and she she took them out and she said, oh, thanks for the idea. Now, I'm just sort of using that as a bit of a, a bit of a flexible tool to say that you're not there to become the child's favourite parent. I mean, the yes. number one, a, a tip that I want to give everyone is remember, parenting is not a competition. Neither is step parenting. We're all meant to be on the same side of that actually loves and supports the children involved. Another um, important point to tell someone who may be becoming a step parent or maybe they've met someone with kids, and this is really, really important. I was lucky because I worked most weekends and I had a lot of other obligations as well. Let's just say girl meets guy with two kids. He is not going to be able to drop those kids and whisk you away for a romantic weekend somewhere in the Victorian countryside. You're not going to be going and spending weekends away at all. It doesn't work like that. He may be your Prince Charming and your Mr. Right, but you've got to remember, as difficult as it might be to admit, he was also somebody's Mr. Right before you came along and he made one or two or three or four children with that person. That relationship hasn't worked for a reason. He's now with you. Hopefully he's learnt something from it as well. Um, there's no mistakes in life. There's only lessons. But the thing is, I, I hear from a lot of people that say, oh, I've met him and it's something. You're not going to get that courtship that you might get if you were two single people because those children that, that are there, they've got their sporting activities. They've got their school activities. They've got birthday parties. They've got commitments or whatever. As that step parent, you've got to realise, and I don't like using the phrase, you're going to be second place because no one is ever anybody's priority, but, but, but you're not going to be that priority on that weekend when those kids are over. And you've got to be able to be objective and be fair with that as well. Because while their dad might be your Prince Charming and your Mr. Right. It's their dad. It's their dad. That, that's who they know and that's who they need and that's who they want. Mm. So I'm going to say that don't think just because you're with someone and you've got a great relationship that suddenly you are going to perhaps on those alternate weekends be able to go off on romantic things, chances are you're not because there will always be a sporting or a school thing Something that else. comes up on technically when it might not be your custody weekend. So those kids really are really are that priority and that that's a big gulp and a big adjustment for a lot of people becoming step parents that they really don't realise that it's not just going to be in a couple of months this will change. This is week in, week out for the next X number of years. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's common when someone is new to becoming a step parent, they may ask themselves, you know, if they should act as a parent from the very beginning or not. I mean, is there a right way to be a step parent or is it something that you just figure out what suits you and the family unit and your family along the way? What are your thoughts? Um, look, as I sort of said um, originally, my firm philosophy is that there is no one right way to step parent in a step parent family, but there is always one right way to behave, and that is with respect. There will be things that you figure out. I mean, as I said, my book covers 
all the issues that you will need to know, whether you've just met a guy with kids, whether you are a current step parent, even if you're a step parent 20 or 30 years down the track. I got a lovely letter from a woman in her 60s who became a step parent in her 20s and she said, my goodness, I was revolutionary back then. Um, there are a lot of things that you, will, that you will figure out, but what you've also got to realise that I believe my book highlights is some of the pitfalls that will be ahead of you. And if you have an inkling as to what they may be, that is going to help you make the right decisions for what you do, for what you do. Um, I'll give you one, one very quick one. But for example, some of the games that are often played. If the child support is being paid, you will often find in the beginning, especially if, if um, your partner's ex hasn't repartnered yet, the kids will come over with tatty clothes. And odds are there'll be a family occasion and your husband or partner will say, can't have them going in that. We need to go and buy, we need to go and buy more clothes. And you might go and do that. And then those clothes will go back with the kids to their mums and then you'll never see them again. And then the same thing will happen again. This is part of the game playing. What you need to realise is, and it sounds awful to say, but you need that objective head to say, no. We pay the child support. That's what it's for. The ex has sent the kids over in tatty clothes. They're going to have to wear them because when the ex finds out that that's what's happened, that'll never happen again. That happened to us. Well, my husband and I, we had very firm words and I said, no, we're not going and buying them new outfits because if we do that once, it'll always happen. Naturally, when the kids were dropped back after the weekend, his ex was absolutely mortified that we took them there. So it was part of the game playing that she'd done. But I can say in you know the eight years, it never happened again. That's what I say where people will try them on. The other thing to remember is if you're paying your child support properly, there is very little money left over. Mm -hmm. In this day and age, there's a lot of bills. There's a lot of, there's extra tutoring. There's dentists, there's, there's haircuts, there's orthodontics, there's braces. A lot of people do it tough. And when child support is paid, there's not that much money left over at the end of a week. And if you start double paying for clothes, it's going to become expected. So my book will show you tips and strategies and how you can have a really good constructive conversation with the ex to say, listen, this game playing has to stop. These kids are important. You need to pack the right amount of things that they need each week. And, and you'll find that it's easier. But the problem is no one does it because they think, oh, no, it's going to be awful. Oh, I can't let them be seen in tatty clothes. Unfortunately, yes, you can. And if you need to say, sorry, that's what their mum sent over, you need to have the confidence to say that. Yes. And what happens in a situation if your stepchild rejects you or feels shy or feels uncomfortable around you, maybe more so in those first sort of four, four or so years you were saying before the relationship is really sort of, and you've grown that bond. I mean, how can step parents best cope, um, I guess, with this situation and find a way to, to relate to the child if the child isn't bonding with you? Okay, well, what I would say is that depending on the age of the child, I mean, if they're three, four, five, it's very difficult. If they're getting into the 10 or the 11 or the 12, um, sit them down and have a conversation with them and reassure them that, you know, you might, you love their dad very much. You know that their mum and their dad loves them. You're not trying to be their mum. You can just say, look, I'm just trying to be a, a good friend to you, like an auntie. Say, I know this is a very difficult situation for you to be able to understand, but I'm here to, I'm here to be your friend. I'm here to help you out and we'll work at our relationship as we go. Always show an interest in what they're doing. Um, and if you know that they're into a specific sport or something like that, do a bit of background reading as well so that you can throw in a few things. Oh, okay, did you see, you know, do you like this player or that player? And they'll think, wow, because you're, you're taking an interest, interest. in them. Yes. At the end of the day, though, again, if they've got a very manipulative mum or dad or whatever who is filling their heads full of rubbish, you might not get that chance to sort things out until they're in their 20s. And even if they're then living with their their, their toxic mum or their dad uh, under the same roof if they haven't moved out, you might not get that chance. However, what you will get that chance is that they will be able to look back and say properly, yep, so-and-so never bad mouth my mum or never did anything. I mean, there were times that when my kids, step kids leave, I'd say, you know, be good to your mum, try and help her out. She's working full time too, you know. And they'd look at me with just a stunned look in their face. And I thought, yeah, 
I know that there's been a bit of mad, bad mouthing going on. Um, it's tell. very important, yeah, as a step parent to try and not take things personally as well. Yes. Because as I said, these kids are feeling very well, conflicted. In, in saying that, I mean, everyone has their own parenting styles um, and this can confuse children, I guess, when they're being parented by a range of different approaches and each with different expectations possibly as well, um, especially if there are issues or negative reactions, like you just said, from a stepchild, uh, uh, the other parent in particular. So do you have any advice on how to uh, like maybe best approach this situation and what happens if you potentially talking about different parenting styles as well, if you and your partner possibly have different opinions on, on how to, to co-parent. Look, um, how can couples work through a, these differences, do you reckon? Okay, so um, I'll let you know I've been a step-parent for 15 years. I've never spoken to or met my husband's ex, which to me has been very sad. So as I said, my step-son um, down the track said, look, you know, you've never bad mouth this and that. And I've said, but it's a shame because there's a lot of missed opportunities that have happened. My biggest advice for everybody is have a meeting, have a meeting at a neutral place. All right. You don't need to be best friends between the exes and between the step parents, but you need to work on common ground. You need to work on common ground because otherwise it's been like an ostrich where you're putting your head in the sand. I wanted to meet my husband's ex to say, look, what do you expect of me? Um, as your children's stepmom, because I don't want to take over your role. These are some things that I think would be workable in a household, but I certainly don't want to have a set of rules in my house that are completely different to the rules in your house because it's too much for little brains to be able to deal with. Um, that meeting was that meeting was never had. So, you know, it was up to my husband to deal with bits and pieces. And that's another reason why I wanted to write the book, because I thought this is this is just not not normal behaviour. Because at some point you have to logistically say that even if your ex has repartnered first, you're probably going to repartner down the track. You might not repartner at the same times, but at some point, odds are you will actually meet someone else. All right, but if you spent 10 years of being bitter and being nasty and this and that, you can't get those 10 years back. And you've always got to think as to, as to, as to what impact is it having on the children. Yes. Um, getting back to, to the children, I mean, and, and, and co-parenting, if you have, or do you have maybe any tips for how parents can best manage a the child's like behavior management? Um, and for example, maybe having consequences for when they, they maybe misbehave, um, which, I mean, did you have any experience with that sort of stuff at all and or any tips at all? Look, I was very lucky. I didn't, I didn't have any of that problem, which was good. But I always made sure that I was very objective and quite firm and quite fair. I left any disciplining that needed to be done to my husband, um, and you know, and because you know that that was his role as well. And again, they had a mum and a dad. There are a couple of niggly bits of behaviour, and I did say, listen, this is not acceptable. You know, and I was, oh, you're not my mum, but I would just say, no, I'm not your mum, but I am your stepmum. I do love and care about you and you need to really pull yourself together. Otherwise, you'll find that, you know, maybe you won't be coming over and visiting again. And it was like, oh, no, naturally, I wouldn't have followed through with that. I'm being, you know, taking a bit of poetic license here. But that's what I say. Kids will test you. They, they will test you. But you need to... You need to be on that same page and you need to be able to have your partner say to his kids or in, in our case, listen, if you act in this way, you're disrespecting me, you're disrespecting the family, you're disrespecting your stepmom as well and really there's no need for this type of behaviour. Why are you doing it? What's going on? It's all about asking the why. Yes, yep. Um, and I'd love to go back to what you said at the start of the chat about um, when you extended your family. Now, what happens when, you know, you have extended the, fa uh, the family by ha wanting to have a, a baby together with your new partner? I mean, how can step parents best be considerate about the feelings um, of, of the other children? Yeah. Okay. So at the time um, when we had our children, our, my step um, son was 14, my stepdaughter was 13. Naturally, when you start to show, then you say, and I just said, listen, you're always 
this, you know, this, this, you'll always be brothers and sisters. You'll always be related. Um, we had a bit of funny stuff where they'd evidently been told by their mum, oh, it's only your half brother. It's only half. And they used that term. And I said, oh, look, that's a bit of a shame. I don't actually quite like that term. I'm an only child. And I said, well, you're half your dad and half your mum. And this baby will be half your dad and half me. I, I like the term that you'll, you'll be brothers and sisters. Yeah, okay, you're not full brother, but I don't like that half term. And when they actually stopped and thought about it, they said, yeah, you're right. I mean, they were very excited. Um, but they, you know, they were sort of at that age where they're a little bit older. They were intrigued as to whether it would be a boy or a girl or something like that. I always say to people, um, if you've got younger stepkids, depending on how it is, a couple of tips don't just talk incessantly about the new baby in your tummy, all right? Don't talk incessantly about it. Make sure that you're still asking your stepchildren what's going on in their lives, what's going on in their school life, what they're interested in as well. If Depending on the age of the kids, if you're going to go out and get some, um, you know, maybe a cot or a pram or a car seat, if it's applicable, take take your stepchild with you so would you like to come and and choose something help for the baby people. if you know yes. if you're having yep. a boy or a girl help help me pick some stuff um if you don't know the gender just go for white or something like that or whatever it might be um a really good tip which is what I did with with our youngest before we had our third is if you've got um your stepchild you might want to pack them a little nappy bag or diaper bag so that when baby does does arrive they've got like a little nappy and a pot of cream and they're all sort of excited a bit with it as well i asked my stepkids if they had any ideas for names and it was quite funny. They had a couple of ideas. And that's what I say to people. You don't need to go with what your stepkids want to call your baby. But maybe they might come up with a name that could be a middle name or something like that. Just a little bit of an involvement. Even that's a great them, idea. Have you got any question? Yeah, have you got any questions that you want to ask me? Or, or what do you think this will be like? I also said to them, you know, this, you know, your, your, when your mum and your dad had you, your mum would have gone through very similar things that I'm going through. I'm feeling a bit tired today or look, my tummy's getting bigger. You, you just involve it a bit in the conversation. But I think one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of younger stepmums do is everything is, oh, baby, baby, baby. No, 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 no. You've, you're having a baby. All right. It's very unlikely that your stepkid's mum is going to be jumping around the room doing cartwheels, given that you're having a baby with her ex. All right. Let, let's be realistic about this. So you don't need to rub it in and you don't need to try and get your stepchildren onto your side. All right. Because that's not how it all works. Just be very matter of fact in do it. Don't crow over it and this and that, because otherwise it'll just backfire. But involve your stepkids as well. Um, I guess they that I'm very to ensure that they yeah. feel equally special, would you say? Yes, so, abso yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, if you've got the little photo of the ultrasound, say, look, would you like to have a picture? Look at the picture. Oh, OK. Now, if they say no, thank you. Don't start saying, oh, why don't you want to have a look? Just leave it. Say, okay. And then maybe at a later time, say, look, is there any reason why, you know, you might not want to have a look at the picture? Then they might say to you, oh, mum says we're not allowed to look. Or, and then you'll know. In the same time, don't say, oh, your mum's wrong. Just say, oh, okay. All right. That's all right. When they've gone back to their mums, talk to your partner and say, listen, can you have a chat to your ex? Da, 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 and stuff like that that that's what i'm saying that's what i cover in my book a lot of these things you may not think of because you'll be very excited about the baby that's your future but always remember sometimes when you're having a baby it can stir up a lot of emotionally jealous feelings in the ex because don't forget that was her dream and her life once yes well yeah talk about the positive aspect of uh, step parenting how would you describe the rewards of step parenting <laughs> All right. The rewards are um, there is there's nothing nicer than seeing the development of children. And if you've been able to help in their upbringing or help them with something that you're skilled in, it might be cooking, it might be sewing, it might be something like that. They're able to sort of enjoy some of the things that you've done. Um, if they've you know got some good results at school, maybe you've helped them with a bit of maths or something, or you've given them confidence going for a job interview. Perhaps you said, listen, shine your shoes. And when you go to see someone, shake their hand, look them in the eye, be really positive. I mean, I know with my, my step, someone, he was going for a job. I would, the best, he said, the best advice I ever gave him is I said, listen, if you don't get this job, 
it doesn't mean that you're not any good. It just means that the company is looking for somebody else. And I used to use the analogy and say, every football game that you go out to play, there's only going to be one winner. All right. But it doesn't mean that you don't then try just as hard the next time around the next week to win the next game. Um, Don't try not to take things personally. I tried to give a much bigger sort of broader worldwide perspective on things. And I think that's incredibly important for young people. Now they're in an incredibly stressful environment. They're dealing with a lot more things than you and I ever had to deal with. There's more pressure on them than ever at school. We hear a lot of issues about mental health and things like that. But I think one of the, one of the most positive um, rewards that you can get as a step parent is being able to talk to your stepchildren and let them know that you are actually there for them, that you're another head on shoulders that they can actually ask advice to. I mean, I remember my stepdaughter after year 12, she said, now, she said, what do you think about gap years? And I said, well, I said, evidently you want one and evidently your mum and dad aren't keen on you having one and neither would your aunts or uncles be. And she just started laughing. And I said, well, tell me why you want a gap year. And so she told me. And then I said, have you had the positives and the negatives weighed up to you? You know, for example, if you go away for a year, you've got a uni place, will you be competing? Will you finish a year later than your other friends? What do you think is the right thing to do? And I said, but I'm not going to tell you I'm just going to, well, anyway, she went away, waited up. She ended up just going away for six months and then she ended up doing double the amount of study to catch up with the others. But, but I think the positive things is knowing that your stepchildren can actually talk to you and ask you some advice, but also being well aware that they may not take all your advice and you've also got to realise what they're, what they're saying to you and try and look a little bit deeper as well and let your partner know or something. That's nothing to do with breaking a child's confidence, but as a step parent, you've, you've got to realise that, you know, you owe it to your partner to perhaps say some of the things that they're talking about as well. Well, we've definitely covered off a lot today. I'm trying to look at these 10 tips. I'm so that's sorry. Okay. I'm that's just, okay. I don't know where the 10 tips are It's gone. absolutely fine. <laughs> we'll, um, we'll provide the link in the show notes for people to go online and, and read the article. But if you were to, I guess, to summarise, I guess, your three biggest tips that you would like people to take away from our chat today, what would they be? Okay. Thanks, Rachel. So I think my three biggest tips are um, your ex is... Your ex, sorry, your ex is not your kid's ex and never will be. That is number one. Um, Number two would be parenting is not a competition between step parents and parents. We should all be on the same side and that's the side that loves and cares and supports and wants the best for these children going forward because the odds are they will probably end up being step parents themselves and if they haven't seen good workable relationships between all the adults, they're going to replicate dysfunctional behaviour down the track. And the other thing, as much as you might want to, it is not your job to fix your stepchildren. All right. And sometimes just remember, just being there is enough to make that difference. Let me just give a little um, aside with that. If you have married a widower and you are the only parent there, that takes on a bit of a different role and a different dynamic. And that's up to you to work out with with your partner as well but in the main yeah just just be there for your stepchildren keep open communication happening and try and be as positive as you can be and realize that if you're experiencing a bit of pushback which will happen during the teenage years a lot of it is hormones highly strung individuals stress from school and things try not to take some of that surliness and that irritability personally because whether you're a step parent or a parent you all go through it with kids. Carolee, this has been wonderful. If anyone's got any other questions oh. for you, um, whereabouts can they find you? Oh, lovely. Well, look, thank you so much, Rachel. And thank you to you and Kidopedia. And let me just say, you run an amazing business, an amazing <laughs> site. You bring so much, such a wealth of information to everybody when it comes to parenting. Because as they say, it's one of the most difficult jobs in the world, can be rewarding, step parenting and parenting. So how you find me is, look, my book is available. It's available off my website, which is 
I'm sure you'll put the link. It's carolykatzenbarnas.com. It is available from Dimex. It's available from Amazon and Booktopia. A lot of people like ordering it from the website because I'm very happy to inscribe it for you if you'd like. And I'm just on social media. It's just Carolee Katzenbarnas. I'm on Instagram at Carolee Katzenbarnas. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. And I'm really happy just to, you know, if anyone wants to just send me a message through Messenger or something or through the website, carolicatsimbanas.com, with any questions, I'm really happy. If I, can, if I can give a few bits of advice that might make your life as a step parent a bit easier, create a bit more harmony within your step family, then my job is done. And I've just had such a lovely response from this book that when I wanted to write it all those years ago, I thought, yes, there is, there is a need for this book. Um, and I'm glad, I'm glad that it's, um, it's hitting the mark and it is actually helping a lot of people. That's just wonderful. And, and all of those links we'll have in the show notes. Um, so Thank by all means, you. anyone watching or listening, if you do have questions, please reach out. She's um, an amazing resource. Thank you, Carolee, so much for your time. And let's chat again soon, hopefully in the not too distant future. Take oh, I'd care. love to. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. You're lovely. And to all your team as well. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Thank you. Right, bye, Carolee. Bye. bye. See ya. <laughs> bye. <laughs>